Hello and welcome to our Year 11 information event for the class of 2022. I am Mr Breen, Deputy Ed Teacher at St Monica's. This is an information event we do every year for Year 11 parents and pupils just to provide some information about the year ahead in what we know is the most important year of their lives so far. You are going to hear from several members of staff. We're going to hand over to Mrs Keenan, the head teacher, shortly. Then following my input, there will be information from Mrs Harland, the head of Year 11, and then some subject specific information from Mr Dalton, the head of English, Ms Talkington, the head of Maths, Mrs Cruxley, the head of RE, and Mr Nassau, the head of Science. There will then be some information from Ms McManus, our assistant head teacher, responsible for our SEMD pupils. Thank you, and now over to Mrs Keenan, our head teacher. Hello everyone, I'm Mrs Keenan, interim head teacher, and I'd like to welcome you to this academic year and indeed to this broadcast. It's been wonderful to welcome the Year 11 pupils back into school, and myself and the staff are really looking forward to supporting them through their final year here. I just wanted to take a moment to share with you what I want for all pupils at St Monica's. And that is for every child to have every opportunity for success every day. It's not always easy, but it's an aspiration that we all hold here at school. Why? Because we want them to leave their place at St Monica's ready to take their place in the world. Sometimes it falls on a generation to be great, as Nelson Mandela once said. And I want our year 11s because I have great belief in them to be that next great generation. I shared with the pupils through my assembly on their first day in school that each one of them is unique. Each one of them is full of potential. Each one of them is a St Monica student and we are proud of that. And each one of them is the future. We hope that during this during this year, their full potential really shines through. Each member of staff at St Monica's believes in every student. They want them to do well. They think they are amazing individuals and they can see what the future holds. We hope that amongst this cohort, we may have someone who goes on to cure illnesses or someone who goes on to be on the world political stage to help make massive differences for the future. We have our fingers crossed for that because we believe in our young children and we want them to be the best version of whoever they can be as they take their place in the world. In terms of their success criteria for this year, it really isn't rocket science. It's about them being the best version of them every single day. I shared this slide with them in my assembly. For them to work hard every lesson, every day. That takes a huge amount of, of self-determination and self-efficacy to really get to grips with that, to dig deep when it gets tough. It won't always go their way, but they know they have the support here to help them adjust and move on and to be prepared because we don't want them to fail. We want them to be absolutely successful and simply follow the rules. Everywhere has them in every walk of life. And I said to the children, if they do everything that is expected of them, they will be rewarded and they are to have faith in that as they move forward. Because anything is possible, the only limit is themselves. As we pray together, we work together, and we serve together through this year. I'm now going to pass you over to Mr Green. Thank you, Mrs Keenan. OK, some of the messages that we have been giving, we are giving to our Year 11 pupils through assemblies at this time of year are coming up on the slide now. It really is time to step up. They know that they are our number one priority in school. That goes with the territory of being in year 11. Being in year 11 comes with privileges and also some expectations. So they have the privilege of being our number one priority. They have the privilege of an after school timetable and lots and lots of support. But there are also expectations on them to be the leaders of our school and to lead by example. The messages they are hearing in assemblies and from their form tutors is that they are expected to be role models for younger pupils in school. That is a message we are delivering to them and we expect we would be grateful if you, if you reiterated that message at home as well. 
What we currently know about year 11, because we know there's uh, a lot of turbulence in the world of exams at the moment, or has been for the last 18 months because of the pandemic, we know that exams will be taking place. We know that there are some modifications in some subjects, which should hopefully help the pupils. So the subject teachers will be speaking uh, to the pupils about those. Um, so we, we need to be aware of those, but we do know that at the moment exams will be taking place. And we also know that as a staff body, we are ready. We've been through the process with the last year 11 in terms of a different type of year 11, where exams didn't take place. And we're more than ready now to prepare this cohort for the exam season. And crucially, we're all on the same team. We all want the same thing, which is the success of this of our year 11 course. When I speak to the year 11s in assembly on Friday, I will be using this analogy that year 11 is like a free piece. There really is no time to waste. We have a, a, a series of exams scheduled for November and February, and it's really important the pupils know that these exams matter. Okay, they're not just there for them to go along and see how well they get on. These exams really matter. There will also be some in-class testing, so they'll have some uh, le lessons where they are doing the test. That's so that we know where they're up to and crucially what are the next steps for their development. And the pupils just need to know that they can, need to control what they can control and ignore all the other noise that is going on around. There will also be a period four timetable. These are after school sessions that the pupils are encouraged to attend. They will start on Monday the 20th of September. I will send home a full timetable next week for the remainder of this half term and it will be reviewed again for half term two. I just encourage the pupils and ask you to encourage your child to make the most of this opportunity. This is teachers giving up their time to support our young people. Some support materials which you will be receiving and the pupils will be receiving are pictured on the screen now. Uh, two guidebooks, one for pupils and one for parents with some really practical tips on how you can support your child through this year and through their exams. So they will be going home with the pupils at some point over the next few days. It really is their time to shine. They need to be selfish. There will be times in year 11 where there are conflicts and uh, they need to make decisions about what is in the best interest of their future. They really do need to be resilient. They also need to be mature and sensible and make correct decisions. And they need to be ambitious and want the best for themselves. As it says there, it is their time to shine. And a message that they will be hearing in my assembly, and we've, we've said to several of the pupils already this year, is that they need to get going on the B of the bang. That is a quote that Limford Christie, the, the 100 metre sprinter, uh, coined around the time of the Commonwealth Games in 2002, when he said he starts his races on the B of the bang. They need to get going as quickly as they can. We know they've had a disruptive uh, time through year nine and year 10, and we're here to support them but they do need to make the most of every opportunity as they go through year 11 and have a really positive I can, I can do attitude. Thank you for listening to myself. I'm now going to hand you over to Mrs Harland, who is the head of year 11 and also one of our assistant head teachers, who is going to give you some more pastoral information. Thank you. Right, hello everybody. Um, as Mr Green said, I'm Mrs Harlan, I'm the head of year 11 and I will be looking after your children this year. Um, in terms of if there are any issues uh, and if you want to make me aware of anything, my email address is there. If you do need it, uh, please do email if you have any issues that you think I do need to be aware of. Um, that would be really, really helpful. Um, this is a huge, huge year for year 11. Um, as a pastoral team, we are experienced in um, getting these year 11 through and making sure that they've got what they need to get to college to, to move on from St Monica's and that's what our job is and that, that's what we will do for them. Um, now just a few things I want them to focus on and I will be sharing this with them in assembly next week. Um, three things, one of them I need them to be on time so please make sure that you stress to your children that being on time in the morning is crucial being on time to the lessons is also crucial. It's going to set them up for the school day and each of the lessons in the right way so that they're there and they're focused, which leads me on to the next, um, the next point. Um, we need them to be very, very focused in the lesson. Each lesson is crucial. They have not got many to go before those 
GCSEs do start. So it's about them doing the best. It's about them not having any distractions and making sure they've got those eyes on the goal and they know exactly where they want to be and how they're going to get there. And last but not least, please do encourage them to enjoy the year, enjoy the time that they've got left here at school before they know it. And I know it's the biggest cliche ever, but before they know it, the year is going to be over and it's going to absolutely fly. So as much as hard work is extremely important, it is also about them enjoying the time that they've got left here as well. Now, something that I will be introducing to them next week, and we do this every year, and we find that it helps with uh, promoting the positive culture, um, is Mrs Harland's High Flyers. So every couple of weeks um, in our assemblies, we will have rewards, and they will be focused on things like merits, things like punctuality, effort, zero behaviour points, um, attendance to revision, all of those types of things. There will be plenty of recognition awards on offer, um, so it is your child's aim to, to get onto that high flyers list and to, to get noticed and to, to promote that positive um, culture in school. Um, just so that you are aware, these are the form tutors for this year. Uh, there have been a couple of changes, but not many, to be honest. You will notice these are the same as that they've had in previous years. Um, I've put their email address on there as well. Uh, some of them have got two because we do have some part time staff that do share forms. So if again there are any issues, uh, please do get in touch with the form tutors. They will be able to help. And if you can't help, they will be able to point you in the direction um, where that help can be, can be sought. Um, and just finally, finish um, please make sure that again if there are any issues that we are aware of them we're here to support we're here to give advice we're here to guide your children and um, we will have colleges coming in to talk about careers and we will have positive steps coming in as well to give individual appointments and individual advice um, about what they want to go on to do in the future but if there is anything that you need Please do contact myself or um, the form teachers to support in any way we can. I'm going to pass you on to Mr Dalton, who is the head of English. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mr Dalton and I'm head of English here at St Monica's. I just wanted to speak for a couple of minutes just about how to succeed in English this year and how your child can do the very best that they can possibly do. The first thing I just want to stress obviously is how central English is to the curriculum and how important it is for our students' life chances as all subjects, but it really does underpin every other subject. I also wanted to just reiterate that it is a course to English language and English literature. They are two separate qualifications and therefore you know, sometimes your child may feel there is a lot of work but please bear in mind it is two qualifications. My biggest top tips are as follows. First of all, your child needs to know the things that they can know. That is things like the quotations for the literature text. They are put knowledge organisers into printing to the BBC. They are also on Show My Homework. And what I would say there is it's really important that your child is honest with themselves. Can they go back to that quote? and recite it without having to look it up. Do they know exactly what an author's view on poverty or society was? That frequent testing supported by yourselves or their peers or testing themselves is, is crucial. Secondly, it's really important they listen to feedback from their teacher. As Mr Green mentioned earlier, we are hoping to run two sets of exams uh, prior to the real GCSEs, and they will be given detailed feedback both following those exams and in preparation for them. It is crucial that, that that feedback is followed and that also your child asks any questions if they are worried about something. The quicker we know about a problem or the quicker we know about a misconception, the quicker we can solve it. The third point really is targeted revision. As I started off saying, I know that sometimes English can be a lot, a lot to have to understand and to have to get into, into their brains, but small and manageable revision is crucial. Your child's English teacher will direct them 
as to the kind of key things they should focus on week by week. OK, and that will become more kind of tightly focused in the run up to those um, two sets of exams and then obviously the GCSEs themselves. For instance, for English literature, just three quotes per character per week. Do not attempt to re revise the entirety of a Christmas carol. It isn't going to work. English language is a little bit different. The child will turn up, the extracts will be the extracts on the day, but they have been provided with information on how many marks each question is worth, how many minutes, and the skills the question will assess. If they know that information, that is crucial ahead of the exam. And finally, just rereading the text is incredibly valuable. The more often your child has read Macbeth, has read A Christmas Carol, has read Miss Spectacles, the better they will know it. And finally, just some resources. So Cliff's notes are really reliable as are Spark Notes and BBC Bite Size. There are some CGP revision guides. Uh, they are very, very useful. They're available on Amazon. Just be really careful to select the AQA ones for English language, Macbeth, and Spectacles and Christmas Carol. Thank you very much. We wish your child all the very best of luck for this year and hope to speak to you soon. I'm just going to hand on now to Ms. Torkington, who is the head of Mathematics. Hi everyone, I'm Ms. Torkington, I'm the head of Maths for State Monitors. So my advice um, to yourself and the students in year 11 is you need to practice maths. The more you practice maths, the better you will become at maths. It's like playing a musical instrument. So if you want to become good at playing a particular musical instrument, you would practice that instrument every day. Now, the best place to practice is where students stay focused and follow the instructions and work for examples from their teacher. They will do really well. The use of maths watch independently, however, is also really, really good with the student's revision after question level analysis is after a, a test and also just for personal revision and um, maths watch is, is really useful. So this next slide just shows you how to use maths watch for that practice. When the students log in, they will notice the my progress tab at the top of the maths watch um, instruction bar. If they click on that, they can search videos watch videos and answer interactive questions on anything their teacher has said that they need to practice. That extra practice will really help them to make extra progress. Now, when they're actually in the exam, the advice to the students is to make sure that they're, they're keeping up with the time. So the maths exam is 90 minutes and the marks in the exam are 80 minutes. So we, we basically say a minute per mark um, is a good time frame to skip to for the students just to ensure that they finish the exam. Students are advised to read the question carefully, underlining key points and showing working for everything they do. Lots of students don't like to show working and often on many of the Edexcel questions now, which is the exam board that we follow, even if a student answers a question right, if working out hasn't been shown, they don't get full marks. So working out is really important to never just write an answer unless it's a one mark question. Working has to be shown. So the advice from me is make sure that you make sure you're focused in lessons and make sure that you're preparing yourselves for the timing of the exam so that you don't run out of time in the exam. Thank you. And I'm now going to pass you to Mrs Crutchley, who is the head of RE. Thank you. Um, hello everyone, as Mrs just said, I'm um, the head of RE. I'm going to talk you through the GCSE RE course. Um, with Year 10, Year 11, we follow Edexcel. It's Religious Studies Specification A from 2016. So that means it was the Catholic Christianity with Judaism. Um, basically, it breaks down, so the course overview, into eight units of study, and that feeds into three external exams. So paper one, which is four units, is Catholic Christianity. Paper two, uh, Judaism, that's just two units. And paper three um, is Catholic Christianity again, but this time we focus on philosophy and ethics, and that's just two units of study. Um, this just shows you what we've covered so far. So you can see that on the left hand side of the screen, and on the right hand side, you can see what we've got left to complete. So you can see that we're, we've got through an awful lot of the course. So Catholic Christianity, which is 50% of the course, has already been completed. Um, and we've looked 
do those four units that you can see there. And um, we've also started uh, Judaism towards the end of year 11. And as you can see, if you move on to the right hand side, we've got that left to complete. And um, once we get to philosophy and ethics and we start working through that, we would hope that by the time we get to the February half term, maybe just after, that we will have completed the course. And from then on, it will give us some time in class to focus on revision and to prepare our students for their exams. So that's what it's all about, how to achieve. Obviously, it's about covering the content, which is what that previous slide is about, but it's also about the revision and it's looking at how we help our students to achieve our best. So in their exercise books, there's detailed marking and feedback, which we know that our students act on in a given time to follow. So their work becomes really good uh, and useful examples. And when they come back to revise, we will be doing a lot of time practice questions. We have done already and um, we'll also set those for home. And I've just heard me speak about the maths. The number of marks that are available are really the number of minutes that we'd expect our students to spend on any particular part of the paper. And um, we will be offering drop-ins at lunch times after schools and certainly times like build up to mock exams, looking at different topics, questions or any concerns that our students have got. So there really is a lot of support. Um, we do provide revision notes um, for all the units. You've possibly already seen some of those on Satchel 1. Um, it's obviously they're all made available to everybody. But it's just about students using them. We do use them in class too, but it's also about them using them at home to help. Um, we would hope that in the next few weeks that everybody will have a revision guide. And it's fantastic because it covers the whole of the course content. The book that you can see on the right hand side of the screen is the one that our students will be provided with. Um, we will also feed into a wider school revision programme, so revision after school. And obviously, as I just said, that once we've finished teaching the content, we will have revision in our class time too. It's just finally then to look at what you can do um, or what to be aware of so that you can support uh, your children at home. So as I've mentioned, show my homework is absolutely fantastic. We've learned just how good and valuable resource it is over lockdown and we've now got to maximise that um, in terms of preparation for exams. So we will be putting loads of resources there. Practice questions, like I said, we're doing in class, we do them at home. But if you are um, aware that your children are doing that, just make sure that they are sticking to time. So like we said, number of marks is the number of minutes to spend on it. And then just two useful websites to be aware of, edXL, so that's the official website for our exam and also Seneca, which is fantastic, a really good online revision resource um, to build up knowledge and connect sort of quick questions that go over the content of the course. OK, I'm going to hand you over to Sinesta, the head of science. Hello, everyone. Um, it's Nasso, um, head of science here. Um, I'm just going to briefly talk you through um, the GCSE course and some revision strategies and some ways of kind of maximising performance um, for pupils. So um, there's been a change this year and the science department have now switched exam boards to edXL science. So just to be aware if you're using any old revision resources from older siblings or anything like that, they'll no longer be applicable to the current year 11 cohort. Um, it's really, really important that pupils recognise um, just how many GCSE science carries with it. So every student um, will do our science course. Um, the majority of our students are on combined science, and that's two GCSEs. So it's really important that students uh, sort of allocate sort of double revision time to combined science. Um, there are um, a smaller group of students allocate three. Um, lots of revision slots um, to triple science, which is physics, chemistry and biology there. There are a number of really good ways um, that pupils can revise. Um, it's really important they begin now, really. Um, so we would recommend revision guides of the school are going to be providing those. Um, and they're a really important tool in identifying the contents of each paper and topic by topic. So there are in total exams and the length of those exams vary. They're an hour and 10 minutes to combine science and triple science to each exam is an hour and 45 minutes. And it's broken down into two biology, two chemistry and two physics exams, um, regardless again, of which course that you're following. And students need to use their revision guides to direct their, their time and revision to the appropriate topics that they need to. 
and there are another um, number of useful tools. The Seneca Learning, um, that was mentioned um, by Ms Crutchley just then, um, head of RE. Um, Seneca Learning is being used by all science teachers. We will be setting about 25 to 30 minutes of homework on there for year 11 students um, every week. So it's really, really important that students are engaging with this. We're going to try and go back to the content that was first taught at the beginning of year 10. And we will be sort of driving that forward so that they're revisiting content that they learned um, at the beginning of the course and just really making sure that they know it in depth and they're able to retrieve it um, over the longer term. Um, it can be used independently. Um, it doesn't just have to be the stuff that's set by class teachers. It can be um, driven by their own independent needs for revision. Um, the website Maths Made Easy, um, obviously it is a maths website, however every single science pass paper is, is available there. You just have to be really careful that you select the right exam board, obviously we follow the Excel science specification. Um, should students complete all those papers, um, the mark schemes are available there as well. You can go into um, many more GCSE science revision questions and they're grouped by topic. They're not necessarily from the specification, but it's still really useful for students to have a look at a variety of different questions now, just give them a deeper understanding um, of the content they're revising. And then a few tips for revision really. Um, revise the areas you find hardest first um, and revisit them again and again. So obviously a lot of students will have an affinity for one of the three sciences, it may be biology. I think mean, if a student has an affinity for biology, they will neglect typically revising physics and chemistry because it's hard. The advice there is really to focus on the two that you find the most challenging. Don't worry so much about the one you enjoy and find easiest because you will be best at that already. So it's really important to revise the areas that you are weakest at. Chunk revision down. Science is broken down into many small topics. So it's really important that students chunk their revision into smaller um, time allocations and um, rather than focusing on a, a, a large chunk on one, one big topic. So I would always recommend doing sort of six 20 minute slots on different areas of science than two hours on one area of science. And finally, repetition is key. Um, Seneca, whether you're using revision guides, aspect questions, once a topic has been revised, it's really important that students go back and revisit it a few times to make sure that they're still securing their knowledge and their understanding. Um, I'm going to hand over it now to Miss McManus to say that. Hello, I'm Miss McManus. I'm the assistant head teacher and I oversee the SEN here at St Monica's. So the access arrangements that we have available for some of the students are reader, extra time, supervised rest breaks, laptops, prompters, scribe and coloured paper. In order for students to have these access arrangements, they are assessed by an external um, assessor who comes into school and then we register those with the exam board. We have done this for a number of our year 11 students and the access arrangements are already in place and registered with the exam board for them. If you feel that your child hasn't been given access arrangements and you feel that they need to be assessed to see if they're entitled to them, you let me know at school and then we can get those assessed. Our deadline for year 11 is February, so we need to make sure that they are all registered with the exam board by February. So we need to make sure they're assessed around Christmas time. So the sooner you let me know, um, the quicker we can get them assessed. In terms of the access arrangements, it's really, really important that you encourage your child at home to use those access arrangements. We can provide them for them, but we can't tell them to use them. So it's really important at home that you make sure that you encourage them to take that extra time or use the reader. Um, or a supervised respite or whatever the access arrangement is available. But if you need any support and any advice around the access arrangements, please contact me at school. I'm now going to hand you back to Mr Breen. Thank you, Miss McManus. OK, so you have heard a lot of information there from various different members of staff. Just going to finish with a short prayer a prayer that we often say with the pupils in assemblies and a prayer that I believe is very pertinent to the year 11s at the moment. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can and wisdom to know the difference. Danica, pray for us, St. Teresa of Calcutta, Amen.
and the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So as we conclude this broadcast, a couple of the key messages and key phrases that we will be using with our year 11 are coming up on the screen for you. It is a difficult year, it is a slog, but as Mrs Harlan said, we need to try and enjoy it because it will be their last days in St Monica's. One phrase that they will hear a lot from us is just keep going. They need to be resilient and they need to keep going even when they are finding it difficult. Ultimately, what we all want is for our young people to be the best versions of themselves that they can be. Thank you for listening to this broadcast. I hope you have found it useful. If you need any further information from school, please do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you. Bye-bye.